Well, good evening. Welcome to church tonight. I always love these nights right before what's traditionally been our vacation Bible school. Obviously, this year, guys, led us a little different direction, but similar. And uh, we're just thrilled that you're here for our service tonight, expecting God to work in our lives. And so as folks are still coming in from all their different meetings, we'll go ahead and get started. Now, of course, in our family devotions as a church, we've been looking at Daniel. And this morning, we had the emphasis of Daniel, uh, his passion to follow the Lord, and that that really made a difference for his friends. And so this morning, our theme was being unashamed of truth and God we trust. And tonight, I want us to focus on the fact that Jesus is with us when we take a stand. I think about the fiery furnace and the fact that Jesus showed up there right in the midst of that when they followed the Lord. <clears throat> and, uh, and, and what a glorious story that is. So what I thought we'd do is we'd actually sing the song the choir sang this morning. We'd sing it as a congregation. So take your song books there in front of you and turn to number 152. Number 152 in your song book. And the song is entitled Bold and Unashamed. As we think about this coming week in God we trust, having a Christian worldview that uh, one that is completely antithetical to the way this world uh, and its humanism is thinking. And uh, so we need to be bold and unashamed. And it starts being bold before the throne of grace. So let's stand together. Number 152, bold and unashamed. says the host of hell against us rise we onward go and claim the prize it's tragic when believers sense the attack of the enemy and they actually wilt and they go back instead of as the bible says there in matthew 16 about storming the gates of hell i will build my church jesus said and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and that's really the idea of us attacking the gates of hell and may we tonight Understand this coming week is important in the mission of what God's called us to as believers. Bold we go through fire and flood on that last verse. Bold we go through fire and flood. By the power of God, that needs to be our heart. As we go into this week, one of the burdens that we had uh, coming out of the prayer meeting, as I've mentioned a number of times a couple of months ago, was that this week would be just a bold declaration of truth. In the beginning, God created. And on it goes right down to the fact that salvation is in no other name. It's in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, the gospel is powerful. It's the power of God unto salvation. And we have the truth. And I trust that we'll come into tomorrow with the love of God, having deep compassion for those that need the gospel. 
but also just an unwavering confidence that what will go forth from this platform and the different workshops and times, God's going to use it. Truth makes a difference. It's a sword, and we need to pray that God will work. In fact, it's called the sword of the Spirit. The Spirit of God uses it mightily, so uh, we're looking forward to what God has. Let's just pray God will use tonight to prepare our hearts. Lord, would you work? In a very definite way, thank you for the meetings we've had for the last couple of hours, and I pray that you'll help us now with this new uh, just way of uh, having this outreach this week. Uh, Lord, would we be able to function clearly, well uh, tomorrow? I pray that your power will be upon this time right from the very beginning. And uh, Lord, we're asking that your word would go forth in a very definite way that will make an impact. We're asking that you'll touch this area. And uh, Lord, the need of the hour is the message of the truth. So Lord, be with us tonight. Would you work in every part of the service now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. you be seated. Amen. As the choir sings here tonight, I want to encourage you to focus in on the words that they sing because this is actually a song that I would trust that you'll Take time, even this busy week, to take time as a family, uh, focusing on the second part of Daniel chapter 3 in your family devotions in the song, God Leads His Dear Children Along. I know you'll be encouraged by these words, and uh, I was even blessed this afternoon focusing on the fact that Jesus is the Good Shepherd and how He leads us exactly how He wants to. I think of how He's led us as the Chief Shepherd of this church, through our Under Shepherd, through our Pastor, and just as we prayed together, even about this coming week. And uh, he's, he's leading us for a very specific reason to do a work in our lives and also to use us. So I trust that you'll be encouraged by this song.
Amen. I love that song. God leads his dear children along. We're going to continue singing out of our song book here tonight. Turn to number 114, please. As you're turning there, as I think about the song we're going to sing, <clears throat> the song is entitled Joy in Serving Jesus. And this is a good song to sing before a week that we give ourselves to the ministry all week long in a very intense way. And I think about what the chorus says. It's joy that throbs within my heart every moment, every hour, as I draw upon his power. You know the key to having joy, even when you're tired on Thursday and Friday throughout this week? It's going to be drawing upon his power. It's his grace. It's through his grace that we have joy. Let's stand together, 114 in our psalm books. singing you may be seated and let me just encourage you with this I have found in my own life <clears throat> that the times when I feel maybe just ah wiped out but I go and trust God to work uh, it's amazing the joy that you experience when he shows up I think about sometimes I've gone so long and I've just not felt like going out and my wife can tell you I felt sick had a headache I wasn't necessarily sick but just uh, didn't feel good and I went out anyway and got to lead somebody to Christ man it's amazing the joy that comes and the great energy that comes through God working through us. So I know he'll do that this week as we draw upon his power. Well, the ushers have come here with the bulletin for today. If you did not get one with your guest or part of our church family, please just signal them just by waving your hands as they come by, and they'll be glad to get that to you. In the bulletin is a connection card, and uh, the connection card is a way for you to communicate to us. And so especially for signups for things coming <clears throat> with regards to this week, we could still use hands here, I'm sure. And so if you can let us know that tonight, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at that even tonight. Uh, if our secretaries can make sure they do that even tonight, grab these connection cards. If there's any way still you want to serve, I also would encourage you to go by the guest service desk afterwards and let us know. Um, but uh, we would, I'm sure we can plug you in somewhere. But I wanted to mention that also prayer requests for our prayer bulletin as we 
make that an important matter for our church family to pray for one another, especially through our family devotional emphasis this summer. So please let us know if you have a prayer request. And if we have any guests here tonight, thank you for coming and be a, being a part of this service. And if you would take a moment and let us know that you came by filling out the front part of the card and any way our church can be a blessing to you, there's a little section on the back. And uh, I would like information about, you can put that in our offering plays as we have our offering or uh, you can drop it off at guest services after the service. And we're just delighted to have you here and trust that you've already found a warm welcome and that you're encouraged with what God's going to do. Pastor? I want to thank you for coming, many of you, at 4 o'clock for our meetings today as we are organizing for something a little bit different, somewhat alike what we've done year after year. And it's always exciting to have an all-out uh, just a major mission to reach our community with the gospel. What a privilege. And we're looking forward to these days. In God we trust. Aren't you glad for the truth of God's Word? You know, what a mixed up day. Uh, I, don't, I don't even listen to the news hardly right now. It's just one rolling bad news after another. A little bit of good news here and there. Uh, but uh, it's wonderful to have the answers. And a lot of answers are going to be given this week as we have our... Christian Worldview Family Extravaganza, and this is as much for us as it is for the community, though we are wanting to reach as many as possible. I'm thankful that so many of you are going to be able to come and be part of this. You're going to be gaining so much. Well, it's a joy to have Brother Tim Ch uh, uh, Chafee here with us and his wife, and they made it in tonight. And you want to stand, and uh, just uh, we're very thankful from Answers in Genesis and uh, I was just down at the ark and saw his work, and uh, tremendous. I, uh, the only the trouble is it takes a long time to get through if you're going to read everything you wrote. But you write it very succinctly. Uh, very good. So thank you. You can have a seat there. But what a joy uh, and privilege to have him. And you ought to see the different uh, topics he's going to be covering. You don't want to miss it. If you can be here, uh, it is going to be great. And the Lord just miraculously worked out for Brother Chafee to be here, and we're just delighted. Again, Dr. Kojima, where are you? He was in here. All right, they're back there. And uh, just a tremendous testimony. Uh, an atheist NASA scientist got saved and his life was changed. And uh, what a tremendous testimony. And really, Brother Chafee's life, uh, you really, when did you go through the trial with the cancer? 2006. 2006. My wife has heard some of that and just really moved by your testimony. And really appreciate your heart for God. And uh, so these men uh, really are burdened to be used of God. And then, of course, Jelaine Appling will be a great blessing on Tuesday and Thursday here. So uh, these uh, are very special people, and we are very delighted and honored to have them here. So we're looking forward to all that they're going to give us. Now, let me mention that um, we, of course, have our, our sessions uh, 845 to 12 o'clock, Monday through uh, Friday. But do remember that on Wednesday night, we'll have our ice cream social at 6.15 up at the Heritage Center, 7 o'clock, a half hour early. We're going to be having our Wednesday night service, and Dr. Kojima is going to be speaking. So we're looking forward to that. That'll be a tremendous blessing. And then on Friday night, I really want to encourage you, the family worldview finale. We're going to do everything we can to get the group back for that night. Uh, all of the different bounce houses and all the stuff will be available afterwards. And, uh, uh, but the key is going to be for the Chafee uh, making his final um, uh, presentation that night. And then I'll wrap it up with the gospel. And uh, we'll have our final uh, little program, not with the kids, but uh, just to wrap it all up, it'll be a, a great time. And uh, we're asking God to do a, a mighty work on that Friday night. So I want to encourage you, even if you can't come during the daytime, you know, be here for those two nights and and to be here, uh, especially Friday night, as we're endeavoring to reach as many people as possible. And so we look forward to just uh, all that's going on. Remember, the Cola Clash is also part of this, and that'll be at 6 o'clock on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights. And Brother Bosler gave you his heart this uh, morning. Probably scared you half to death if you're a parent and never heard about it before. It's not quite as bad as he says. Close, but not quite as bad. Uh, it's just a great time. Do you believe in it, Brother Pound? It's good stuff, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, it is just a great three days from 6 o'clock to, what is it, 8.30, is it? 
Uh, but then 9 o'clock, okay, get that time right. And uh, so be praying as a team. They already have well over a couple hundred folks that have already signed up to come. And uh, that's for junior and senior high. Junior high, by the way, can come to the uh, morning and be part participant. And then they're also able to be in the Cola Clash that night. And I'll uh, be inviting friends, neighbors. It's a great outreach. And we are really looking forward to that. We will be having a prayer meeting at 7 o'clock for about 15, 20 minutes right here in the auditorium as things get going each morning. If you'd like to join us, maybe you can't stay, but you'd like to be with us for prayer, you're certainly welcome to do that. We would love to have you here uh, for that prayer time. Well, let's get into the Bible school mood. It's a little bit different than what we're used to, but we do have a theme song, and I need practice since I have to do it tomorrow. So I'm going to see if I can pull this off here. I did it once already with all the workers. <clears throat> now that thing's got to work up there, guys. I'll wait till it... Uh, all right, thank you. That thing can't go off, So because uh, I totally am without... I don't have the words in front of me. So, uh, so we will hear from the piano... A, set of chords. Oh, brother, we have lost it. This is bad, I tell you. Uh, let's listen to it again. It's still bad. All right, well, everybody be on your toes. You ready? All right, that's better. Let's get in the Bible school. All right, thank you, Daniel. Oops. Sing it out now. We can know that God made every living thing. By His spoken world, He made creation sing. We can see the heavens tell the glory of the Lord. As we rest in faith, trusting in the only word, for in God, cross he is the one we rest upon we can live in victory through christ alone victory through christ alone god the one we rest upon we can know that jesus saves us we can and girls okay we'll get this together all right get back into the bible school mode here and uh, that certainly <clears throat> that tune was chosen because that certainly identifies us with our bible schools as that was the march that we always have and it certainly fits the words that were written well boys and girls you ready to go to outer space I thought so. And all you big boys and girls, I don't know what's going to happen here. This is a whole new, uh, uh, this is not part of our round of skits here. So I don't know what, how to announce it except that let's start. <laughs> Logbook entry number 2121B, Captain Cosmo reporting. My crew and I find ourselves in a very perilous situation. We are stranded here on board the International Space Station. We were making a brief routine stop here on our journey back to Earth when suddenly, inexplicably, our ship's systems shut down. I have sent out a crew of space rangers to secure the cargo in our hold. We must protect the contents of that hold at any cost. The famous Captain Cosmo. Welcome. We're, we're so glad to have you here. Um, we've heard so much about you. Uh, um, I hope we're not interrupting anything important. No, no, not at all that you were speaking vaguely into empty space for no purpose. 
I understand that humans sometimes frequently do that. Oh, I see. You must be a robot. You are incorrect, sir. I am not a robot. I am this vessel's personal artificial intelligence nanny. <laughs> I am programmed to tell you what to do and what not to do. Oh, I see. A personal artificial intelligence nanny. Pain, for short. <laughs> well, you do indeed seem to be a very great pain. Thank you, sir. I aim to give satisfaction. Please forgive Robo. Uh, he can be very blunt, but he means well. He knows everything. He's a huge help here on the platform. Um, this, we, this is the um, International Space Station, and I'm Kepler, the chief scientist here. We spend all our time examining all the wonders of God's creation. Thank you very much for your welcome. My crew and I have only just arrived, but already we feel at home. I love what you've done with the place. The chairs are a nice touch. <laughs> How long have you been here, Dr. Kepler? Well, let me see. I came in Earth, uh, the Earth year 2020. Yes, so that's 100 years. 100 years, unbelievable. I know, he looks much older than that, doesn't he? <laughs> well, um, you know, the anti-aging effects of living in space are really marvelous. I see. <laughs> Captain, here you are. Ah. We've been looking all over for Lieutenant you. Lieutenant Lightspeed! Yes, sir. Have you made any progress? Yes, sir. This is Dr. Daisy, head physicist on board the space station. She's a genius. A real genius. Uh, uh, Captain, I've just been scanning your ship system back in my lab. I'm afraid your ship has been infected with a, a computer virus D. No, no, not a computer virus D. Uh, yes, I'm afraid COVID is very serious. Um, it's clear from your logs that an intruder infiltrated your system yesterday when you were docked here. It's a good thing our forward boarding craft is synced to a different system, so we can still use it. Because of the virus, we've had to abandon our VBS. Our what? Our VBS, our very big spaceship. <laughs> Nobody calls it that, Lieutenant. Uh, which is different from the FBC, the forward boarding craft. Um, however, there is good news. If you give me a couple of days, I believe I can eliminate the virus in your system. It may be too late. We need to get back immediately. I understand your urgency to get back to Earth. It's been a long time since I've seen home myself. Earth is a wonderful place in our galaxy. Ah, yes. Yes, it is a home unlike any other. There's so much to love on Earth. The grandeur of the mountains. The glory of the sunsets. And cheeseburgers. <laughs> what? what? Thick. Juicy cheeseburgers with a thin slice of tomato and a little bit of onion. Uh, you know, she makes a point there. The food on board the space station is enough to turn anyone's stomach. Yet another advantage to life being a non-human. Oh, boys! Lunch time! Oh, no. Oh, what's on the menu today, Miss Moon Pie? Ah, same as yesterday. More space paste. Uh. I, contraire, yesterday we had pizza, salad, and ice cream in a tube. And today we'll have pot roast, jello, and pudding Let me guess. in a tube. In a tube. Perhaps we could branch out, you know, maybe you could make something that we could eat with a knife and a fork. Yeah, most, most definitely. Well, I find this very convenient. You don't have to chew. It's already pre-digested. By who, I might ask? Miss Moon, why don't you come with me? Let's go back to the kitchen, and I will help you whip up something special for oh, the Oh, that would be wonderful. Yes, that would be most wonderful. What a remarkable woman. Uh, I've never seen another like her. I'm pretty sure uh, Miss Moon Pie 
Only the galaxy needs one of those. No, 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 no. The other one. Uh, Dr. Daisy. Yes, what a delightful name. Well, I'll let you say so. As long as she can get our systems squared away so we can get back home. You're right. Now we must focus our energy on securing our ship's cargo. It's extremely valuable and very attractive to space pirates. <laughs> As space pirates, our captain. There are no space pirates here. They've been tailing us for weeks. A very dangerous crew known as the Black Hole Bandits. I'm afraid they may have followed us here. No, no, no space pirates here. Just us born scientists. And uh, oh yes, we had some um, visitors come in yesterday, some tourists. They're a bit odd, but then aren't all tourists odd? Ah, I see the rest of my crew have finally arrived. Let's see what they found out. Space Rangers, turn, shoot! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fly me to the moon. Oswald. Hey, hey. Hello, boss. Allow me to introduce my crew, Dr. Kepler. Of course, you have already met Lieutenant Lightspeed, second in command. And this is Officer Ace, Chief Engineer. And this is Oswald. He's our summer intern. <laughs> Space Rangers, report! Captain, I've secured our cargo in this titanium canister. Well done! And I've uh, obtained permission to stow the canister inside the impenetrable hold of the space station. Great work! I, I, I read a book about anti-gravitational experiments. A book about anti-gravity? Was it useful? I couldn't put it down. <laughs> well, Captain, it seems your cargo is safe for now. I will assist Dr. Daisy in debugging your systems, and we'll get you headed home as soon as possible. Thank you, Dr. Kepler. I certainly hope Kepler is right. Yes, yes, we're safe here on the space station. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Fall out! Left face! And yet, for some reason, I still feel uneasy. into it. Ah, don't worry about him. He's just a robot. You are incorrect, sir. I am not a robot. I am this vessel's personal artificial... Okay, step aside, Roscoe. I am the show right now. Okay, so... Where was I? Oh, yes. Ah, so... Here is our captain. Our captain is feeling the bird of this precious cargo. Oh, Bless his heart. We can perhaps lighten his load. <laughs> if you see what I mean. <laughs> yes. But it's gonna take a really powerful weapon to get through that cargo hole, like a like a laser ray gun. Or a plasma ray gun. Or a Ronald Ray gun. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. Good thinking. I think I've got a better idea. Come now! Dear me, I wonder if 
Captain Cosmo knows what he's up against. We better come back tomorrow to see what happens next. Well, after that, we better take a word of prayer. <laughs> well, we do thank the Lord for uh, so much uh, work that's been done, and we just really want to just take a moment here and bow our heads in prayer and ask the Lord to work in every aspect of what's been done. And uh, we certainly need the Lord and His uh, intervention um, as much as ever. And when you think of our community, we think of the needs that are in people's lives, this is really a divine uh, moment to, uh, to touch hearts and homes. And let's really be seeking the Lord. I know there's been much prayer. And uh, shall we just stand together here at this time and take just a moment uh, for prayer and uh, just dedicate these uh, next several days uh, to the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we are thankful that... Uh, as uh, we have faced these uh, weeks of unique um, need in our world that as a church we have sought to uh, bow before you and to hear what you have to say and to ask you to lead us in times of just unprecedented uh, uh, situations. And uh, Lord, thank you that you have uh, led us. Thank you that you are on the throne, that you are an unchanging God, and that your plan and your purposes are unchanged as well. Thank you that we can join you in reaching out into a world that's shaken, a world that's needy, a world that is losing much of its understanding about who you are, and a world that uh, for so many folks do not know how to return to you through the gift of your Son. And Lord, we pray that you would use these coming days to bring folks in to understand you, uh, to receive even through our church, Lord, a testimony of your reality. I pray you'd fill each one of us with your spirit. I pray, Lord, that you'd give us a heart of compassion and a heart of uh, just uh, endurance as we go uh, day by day. Lord, we pray that you'd fill each speaker with your truth. Uh, we think of Brother Chafee. We think of Brother Kojima. We think of Pastor and uh, those others speaking, Brother Bosler, myself, um, uh, Mark Jr. and uh, Lord, each one of our folks, would you just enable us to preach the truth in the power of your spirit and uh, give us the very words to say. Lord, we pray right now as folks are deciding to uh, come or to not come, to remember this opportunity, would you just uh, supernaturally intervene and bring folks to uh, enjoy this event and to hear the truth. Lord, would you protect uh, from COVID? Would you protect from uh, transmission of this disease. Thank you, Lord, in our whole area that it is not a hot spot. And Lord, we pray that you would take away fear and that you would take away this disease and protect this event from it. We are trusting you to do, to do that, to work. And uh, so, Lord, uh, would you be glorified? We ask you to superintend in every detail, every technical side, every speaking side, every, in, uh, every interaction. Um, Lord, bless the secretaries, bless every aspect of the work that would uh, achieve uh, uh, this ministry. So, Lord, we thank you. We dedicate these days and each person in it to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Okay, since I just sit, had you seated, all of you that will be helping out somewhere throughout the week in the, any of the programs, would you stand for just a moment so that we can get a sense of all of those that will be involved. Wow, that is tremendous, and we appreciate your help this week. Thank you. You may be seated. I do want to remind you that uh, uh, on the connection card, if you still would like to be involved and uh, have somehow not connected yet, mark that. If you'd help with the cleanup and put, getting everything back to normal on Saturday, if you'd mark that, that'd be a great blessing. And then especially for follow-up, if right now you already know someone that you want to follow up to visit, please let the office know. And then between now and uh, the end of the week, if you'll do that, a week from Monday we'll start our follow-up. And we certainly want to honor your requests. If you know folks and have, uh, have the connection with them, let us know that, and that will be a great help. Now, next Sunday, we'll, we will have a follow-up time in the morning uh, for all of the elementary division. We'll have an all-you-can-eat cereal breakfast blast. 
an exciting children's program. And uh, <clears throat> so that'll be, uh, you will be getting the kids excited about that, especially Pancake Picnic and Bible Study for the Teens between the two programs, trying to get those folks back. And then in our fellowships, just a wonderful morning planned. And so we wanted, we'll be encouraging the, the adults here to be part of the Bible study fellowships on Sunday morning. And then I'll be speaking, uh, uh, it'll be a gospel emphasis, but I'll be talking about uh, the situation uh, prior to the flood and then how that is just a mark of the need of the day that we're in today. And uh, so that'll be on this coming Sunday. All right, I believe those are the key things we needed to mention. I hear we have a couple of birthdays. Uh, Jim Sigma's birthdays today. Some little bird told me that, so happy birthday to him. And Seth Folkers, uh, good to have Seth back. I haven't even mentioned that publicly. He and his wife are back from Cameroon, sort of surprised me. Uh, they were able to get here, which was a real answer to prayer. And how old are you now, Seth? 34, man, you are getting up there, brother. Uh, but uh, it's a good thing you married a young wife, so you're in good shape there. But uh, uh, we're glad to have the Folkers back. In fact, why don't you come on up here, Seth, and lead us in prayer for the offering. Ushers, if you'll come, let's uh, stand for a word of prayer. And uh, we'll ask the Lord's blessing here upon this offering. <clears throat> Thank you for this day that you've given to us, and thank you for the blessing it has been to be assembled here together as your people and as your children. Thank you for that privilege and, and just for the, the blessing each one of us have received. And thank you for the opportunity this evening to give to the ministry of this church, to give back to you for your, the work of, of reaching souls here and around the world. And I pray that you would guide each one of us as to what you'd have us to give, and I pray that uh, you would guide in the and bless the usage of it, and uh, bless in the, the, uh, the ministry going on this week. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for that. Rise, my soul, arise. 261 in your hymnal now, 261. Continuing this theme of trusting the Lord and the fact that 
Uh, we have the Lord's help with us when we trust him. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Let's stand one more time here before we have the preaching tonight. 261. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust. the fourth verse as the final verse but we never can prove but we never chorus one more time. Trust and Thou wouldst come down again, making real thy wondrous presence, melting down the hearts of men. Rend the heavens, show thy presence, smile upon us, hide thy frown. Grant us mercy, bless thy people, rend the heavens, Lord, come down. Oh, that thou wouldst rend the heavens, breaking through the clouds of night, Casting out the hosts of evil, putting all thy foes to flight, rend the heavens, show thy presence, smile upon us, hide thy frown, grant us mercy, bless thy peace.
that thou wouldst rend the heavens, shining forth thy glory bright, making known thy name in power, working wonders by thy might. Rend the heavens, show thy presence, Smile upon us, hide thy frown. Grant us mercy, bless thy people. Rend the heavens, Lord, come down. Rend the heavens, Lord. I want to take just a few minutes here tonight. We won't go long just because of the big week we have before us. But I do want to emphasize, as I emphasized last week, the vital importance of a very solid personal prayer life. We went over, I hadn't <clears throat> been over it for a while, I went over the hour with God. And the, uh, the way that you can cover all the different aspects of communication with God, and we just touched on it last week to try to encourage you. And I do want to challenge you as you go through these days. It's easy when we're busy to neglect the most important thing. Now, we've, of course, taken quite a bit of time in corporate prayer as a church over these last couple of weeks, but that individual prayer time is so vital. One section that we just had to, for time's sake, last Sunday night just zoom over that I think is often missed in our prayer time is the matter of meditation and discovery. And so I'm going to take just a few minutes here to talk about that 10-minute section that I think is vital in your communication with God as you have all the different aspects. Now, for those that are not familiar with what we're talking about. We're talking about taking the first five minutes or so of worship and praise, and then another five minutes waiting on God, another five minutes confession of sin, and then going on to spiritual warfare, then claiming promises, then 10 minutes of intercession and petition, another five minutes of thanksgiving, and then 10 minutes of meditation and discovery, finishing up with listening to God, and then singing and praising the Lord at the end of that time. That's just a suggested order, but it's just really a blessing to have a plan to be able to take that kind of time and really interact and come into the very presence of God, which is so important. In this secular day, pagan day that we live in, it is vital that every day we actually meet with God. My friends, He's real. He's on the throne. The Spirit of God is in your heart. And though we're not talking about an emotional experience, sometimes you'll have emotions. We're not talking about a, uh, a time that's necessarily experiential. There is that spiritual reality when the Holy Spirit begins to make truth become real and the truth about the Lord, and you genuinely get into communion with God. And let me just say this, unless uh, we're just blind to something, when you start into that time, within a few minutes, you begin to have the barriers come down. And it's different every day, but what a blessed, blessed privilege to come into the very presence of God. Prayer, one writer said, bathes the soul in an atmosphere of the divine presence. And that's really what happens. And when we, day after day, take the kind of time necessary to really commune with God, the dots begin to connect, and life is seen from a spiritual biblical perspective rather than uh, overwhelmed by our secularism and the humanism of our day that is so prevalent around us. So just a little bit of review there. Uh, and, uh, and so I want to talk tonight about the need to allow God in this 
time of prayer, you're going to have other Bible reading and Bible study. But I love to take the scripture and while you're in the time of prayer, allow God to work and really meditate and discover God's leadership in your life. That's what uh, this uh, is all about. Um, and so I want to first of all look at the matter of discover. This is just a topical quick study here. I just wanted to take that one section out. And so when we take the 10 minutes and we take a chapter to look at or whatever we choose uh, to, to do, this is exactly what we do in our Bible studies on Sunday mornings, but it is a process that need, we need to be disciplined in in our own personal time. We need to realize that we are opening the revelation from the very heart of God. I like to periodically go over 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and look at how God has revealed to us that which we could not know. By the way, science cannot evaluate God. Science does not have the capability of understanding the things that are of God. Only God knows that. And uh, so anything that's in that, in that realm, but we have the revelation from His very heart that He has given to us. And the Spirit of God will lead us in our daily prayer time to truly discover His will and His truth for us in that day. Do you realize if you take 365 days a year and you're faithful in your Bible reading and then you're faithful in really zeroing in on truth that you're going to learn a lot of truth just in your private time in one year. I mean truth will become real. Uh, you will begin to memorize scripture that God has put upon your heart, how he's spoken to you. And, and this is not going to anymore be theory. It's going to be a dynamic relationship with God. So as you read the truth, look for a key verse. As you are reading, communicate with the Lord about what you are reading. Let me say that again. As you read the truth, be looking for that maybe more than one verse or may just be a phrase, but what is the Spirit of God wanting in your meditation time in prayer to really emphasize in your life? And God wants to communicate. So as you're reading, communicate with God about what you are reading. Uh, the Bible doesn't just need to be an academic, intellectual exercise. It needs to be, obviously, understanding it. That's why it's tremendous to have Bible helps uh, in meditating so we can be accurate with the language and so forth. But God wants us to be calling upon Him and to allow His truth to answer those questions and to work very distinctly in our hearts. We're very familiar with Joshua 1 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt have, make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Joshua was about to go on a campaign that was. Uh, that which the nation of Israel was unwilling up to this point to do. They were going to be facing an impossibility. They were walking into disaster if God did not intervene. But the Lord made it very clear. Now Joshua, this, this word needs to be so in your heart so that as you approach these impossible circumstances the spirit of the living God, the Shekinah glory can give you the direction. You'll know the truths and you will be able to really allow me to lead you. Psalm 119, 15, I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. And of course, I love Psalm 1 where uh, the, the blessed man is the one that delights in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Meditate has the idea to ponder, to, uh, to, to chew over and over, to look at it from every angle, to understand through the Spirit of God's illumination what that really means. You know, you can just shoo, fly through Scripture, and it can be a blessing. You get the basic thoughts. But I'm telling you, sometimes you can take one phrase, and it explodes. You realize, that's God. That's what God says. That's a promise. That's real. 
and the Lord will actually speak to you. You know, we often talk about George Mueller's prayer life, but if you have read his biography or have studied his prayer life, the one thing that you find is that key to his prayer life was not just him coming with requests, but he was very thorough in his meditation of, of God's Word. I, that was how he learned how to pray. I learned this from my dear saintly grandmother who just had a powerful prayer life. But in her praying, you could tell she had, God had given her truth that directly applied to what she was praying for and confidence had come that she was in the will of God praying about whatever specific things that she was praying about. And so uh, uh, he mentions the result I have found to be almost inv invariably this, that after a very few minutes my soul has been led to confession or to thanksgiving or to supplication so that though I did not as it were give myself to prayer but to meditation yet it turned almost immediately more or less into prayer. He's talking about when he's in the Word of God. And he talks about how that when he's in the Word of God God, that's how he prayed. The Word of God was just a key part of his whole thought process. So let God speak to you through his Word. Talk to him about it. This is God's, these are God's thoughts. I mean, you know, we have our thoughts, but we need to let God speak through his Word. You say, how does God speak to me? Wow, he has really already spoken to you. And when your heart is in tune and you've already spent 40 minutes in prayer and God has been working in your heart, you get into the Word of God, it will come alive, I promise you. It will be precious to you, not only encourage you, but you will have truth that will grip you and change your life. And the, the key verse or section that speaks to you you need to write out that key verse. Now, we do that, of course, on Sunday mornings here in our Bible studies. We do it in our discipleship. But there is something about the discipline of writing out a verse, especially when you're having a prayer time. And that makes you start the process of meditation. And as you do that, and of course you've seen this on your sheets, what is happening in this passage? Number one. Number two. What do we discover about God from it? In other words, what's the context and what does this say about God? Let me just say from this morning's message, do you think Jonah maybe needed to do a little bit more of that? <laughs> what was his big problem? He had a warped view of God, didn't he? If he, and yeah, I shouldn't say that. He actually said, I know that's the way you were. But he had not accepted it. He had not reveled in it. He had not based his life upon the mercy and long-suffering and goodness of God. And not let that change him. And, uh, and what do we discover about people from it? Ourselves and others. The wisdom that comes, the direction, the perspective that comes is an amazing thing. Wilbur Smith was a very warm-hearted commentator and professor, and he writes, we should be careful not to give all our time just to reading the Word to see how much we can cover, but after reading a portion, we should carefully, prayerfully turn it over in our minds and appropriate it <clears throat> in our hearts, and how true that is. And then, of course, that second thing that we want to encourage you to do is rewrite the words in your own words. In other words, being true to what the text says, what does it mean? Uh, just meditate on it and write it down where you can understand it. Psalm 2711, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lean me in a plain path because of mine enemies. And so we need to just really take the time, that passage, what does it mean? And what does it mean to me? What is God saying? You see, prayer really does need to be a two-way conversation. And the only way it's going to be truly a two-way conversation and you don't just get subjective completely is that you need the objective Word of God while you are praying. Certainly, you need to be reading the Word and it needs to be part of your life. But in the actual exchange of prayer, there needs to be that discipline of meditation. So we need to be discovering and then here's the key that I wanted to get across. Number two, obey. 
You've heard us say it a thousand times, discover, obey, share. Obey. How does the truth in this Bible passage uh, change, number one, how we see God, number two, how we treat others, and number three, how we live. Now, folks, truth should change our lives. And sometimes I'll go several days and realize I'll go through the motions and I realize, wow, I haven't let the Word of God change my perspective on God to be more biblical and really strengthen my relationship with others and cause me to live in a way that I know is more and more according to the pattern of Jesus Christ himself. And, um, and so we need to really allow God to dynamically expose us, convince us, convict us of our needs. You know, we don't need to wait seven days until we hear preaching again or three days until Wednesday night to hear preaching again to have conviction. You know, every uh, day, I've had, tell you, some of the most excruciating conviction and direction I've ever had has been on a, in the early morning hour with God. All of a sudden, God just opens it up, and it's a blessed thing because you've been trusting Him with your heart. You've been trusting Him with your life. And, uh, and to have that truth uh, really grip you about the right view of God and how your relationships ought to be and how there's wrong motives and there's bitterness there. And then what are we doing or not doing that God's wanting us to correct? And um, much could be said there. And then B... What must I do to obey? And here's where we come up with that I will statement that is practical and measurable in 24 to 48 hours. Now, it's easy to that, let this become a little mechanical or just do it. But did you, do you think that God has seven things a week at least that he'd like you to grow in? <laughs> Again, just think, 365 days if we would have one distinct area that God led us in, guided us, and supernaturally changed us, that would be a lot of transformation in one year. You know, the up and down Christian life is not what God wants. So this is one of the beauties of an extended time with God every day. Sure, you're, you may feel a little bit like you're going up and down, but you're moving forward and upward all the time. You're growing here, and then God adds to that, and then God adds to that. And you get this confidence that God is working, He's protecting, He is transforming me, and you're not looking for experience, you're not looking for emotion, you have this settled relationship with God, and there's just that great joy of seeing God continually lead and guide you. Then you're very tender when you hear the preaching of God's Word, you're very tender when you hear other times of of truth being given to you, you can put the pieces together and you begin to have wisdom that is really discerning, that wisdom that comes from God. And that all comes through really taking time to let the Spirit of God open up the Word of God to you just on a weekly, uh, daily, excuse me, practical basis. And so it's uh, so important. So it's so important to write down in the listening section of your journal, I will. And to be as specific as possible about it. And a lot of times we're afraid to be specific because that means we're going to have to apologize. We're going to have to speak to somebody to go out of our way to sacrifice and reaching someone. Uh, I don't know how many times God has given direction. I want you to reach that person. I want you to step out and do this. And you're having a definite, dynamic encounter with God. But you know, when you finish your prayer time, you got direction from the King of Kings. You know, you look at Moses and God gave direction to him. You go to the New Testament, see the Apostle Paul, God continued to direct him. My friends, your life is as important as those men and women. God has a, has a distinct mission for you. Do you not think that he can direct and guide you? And we've got to be careful. I, am all, I fully believe the Spirit of God subjectively leads us. But it needs to be in the context of saturation with Spirit-empowered meditation on the objective Word of God. 
And you will find that clear direction will come as you are in this book. Especially during a time of prayer. It will click. That's what I'm supposed to do. And you will know it's what you're supposed to do. In fact, what's going to happen is those verses are going to end up in your promise section. Because you've had an encounter with God and now you stand upon that. That's what God's told you. That's what he's promised you. And then you, got, you have great peace because God is working. And then finally, move along quickly, share. Remember, one of the principles in the Christian life is God gives for you to give. In the material realm, God gives you to give. We've given the illustration a number of times of a FedEx driver. Uh, he's not to take one of those boxes that he has and take it home because he was the driver. I mean, that FedEx box is for him to deliver to where, whoever, the, wherever the address is, and he's to give it to them. God gives us material blessings, and he has them earmarked many times for other people. Well, especially in the area of the stewardship of truth. You know, uh, in sec, or 1 Corinthians chapter 4, we often quote that uh, a man uh, is required of a steward that a man be found faithful. If you look at the context, that's about truth. In other words, you hear to share. You hear to share. What you're hearing tonight is for you to share. Uh, we've got to understand, that's what we uh, teach our academy and our college students, that that what they're getting certainly is for transformational work in their own life, but it's for them to be transformed so that they then can, can take that truth by the power of God and give it to others. And that is so important. Now, it will change. Now, this is important. It's not some cute little idea. Discover, obey, share. I mean, we're talking big time direction from Almighty God. And this matter of share is not some nice little idea. This is God's plan. And when we are thinking share, we're going to get a lot more from our meditation time. If you're really wanting to get it, to give it. Now, I have the privilege knowing I have to speak. A lot of times I'll speak 12, 14 times a week. Believe me, this time is very important for me. Because I get seed thoughts and seed thoughts over and over and over uh, in little devotionals and opportunities to speak or challenge or counsel. But friends, just think of all the interactions you have. God wants you to be thinking, all right, I've got to give this to your family. You are, that's what family altar can be, is the sharing of, of what God has given to you in marriage. Uh, just to share with one another the, the dynamic of God working through the Word of God. It's, and it, it becomes alive. It's real. But then far more. And it can open doors to giving the gospel in so many other ways. But folks, we've got to learn that this, the, God has given us the truth for us to be stewards of it. So we need to summarize the truth that we've learned so it can be shared. Um, Psalm 119, 172, my tongue shall speak of thy word for all thy commandments are righteousness. And so we need to summarize it. And as we've taught before, we need to make a bridge statement, a way that we can communicate it. By the way, have you ever been impressed by truth and then tried to talk about it and you can't quite get it out? <laughs> I always tell the preacher boys, one of the worst things you can do is get all stirred up about a about a passage and in the emotion of that thing you can get up and preach and you get up and it's as unclear as it gets you know you've got to work on it a little bit to get it precise and down well that's what this is about a bridge statement a way to talk about things a way to clarify it and and i'll tell you what when you have shared the truth with somebody you're 10 times more able to remember that you share it a couple times you got it You've got it. And that's why anytime you learn something, tell everybody all day long, you know, and I tell you, I found in Joshua whatever, I, I found, found in Philippians, God touched me heart. I just want to tell you about it. I won't be long. You got it. And it's a great blessing. And you want to make it clear. And ask the Lord to reveal the person who needs this truth. And uh, God will show you.
God will show you. God will give you an opportunity to take the truth and to be a blessing with it. Ten pretty power-packed minutes, aren't they? If we'll allow God to work. So I just wanted to review this. I hit it so quickly last Sunday night. I thought, you know, I need to get back. I need to camp on this a little bit because uh, this part of our prayer life is vitally important. Do you believe God can talk to you? Do you believe the Spirit of God wants a relationship with you? Absolutely. Who is the author of Scripture? The Spirit of the living God. He has promised to illuminate it. You can come, you can come out of the, of the morning of every day having heard from God. I'm telling you folks, when your spirit is aware of the presence of God and you have heard from God, I don't care what happens. You know that God is real. You know that God is working. And your heart is filled with purpose. It is filled with encouragement. And it will change how you face that day. So let's ask God to give us some real times of meditation and discovery that will be a great blessing, even this week. Wouldn't it be wonderful for each of us to come out of each morning with something to tell somebody? Uh, be powerful. And may God give us that kind of heart. Let's bow for prayer. Simple message here tonight as we've uh, just focused on this one aspect. But uh, it, is a, it is so important. You'd say, Pastor, you know, I do get away so often from just allowing the Spirit of God to speak to me in prayer, to bring me to a place of determination to obey Him and to be specific in that. And I don't often hear His voice like I should or obey what He's told me to do. And I need far more interaction along that direction. I know that 365 days a week He could lead me, guide me, direct me. I could be much farther ahead and I long for that. I want to be a blessing to others. I don't know how God may have touched your heart in this simple challenge, but you'd say tonight, you know, in my prayer life, I want to get back to I will statements. I want to get back to being specific. I think all of us need to get away sometimes from the mechanical aspect and just make it that back to that spiritual dynamic reality of really walking with God. And you'd say, Lord, touch my heart tonight. I, that is something I really do want to have victory in again would you pray for me? With heads bowed, would you just slip your hand up? It's just good to be definite about that. God's spoken to you about that. God bless you. I think so many of us realize we have to continue uh, to allow God to help us. And of course, we always want to give someone an opportunity if you're here and do not know for sure that you have eternal life. Friends, that's why we're doing this next week. And we want you to know the Lord. And you say, Pastor, I'm here tonight, but I'm just struggling with what would happen if I were to die. So much talk about that today, and, and I just sense I'm here by divine purpose, and I'd appreciate your prayer for me too. Is there anyone like that? Just slip your hand up. I won't point you out, but I will pray for you that God will make it clear what it means to, to know the truth, the good news of the gospel, and know how to be saved. Anyone like that? Just slip your hand up till we can see it. Lord, would you work in hearts? Lord, this matter of individual time with you, it's everything. It is so crucial. It's not some nice idea. It's not just a nice discipline we need to add. It is the essence of who we are and the purpose we have here on this planet to glorify you by, by having that relationship by your power with you. Now, Lord, would you just work in the heart of everyone that indicated the need here tonight and just help us now, I pray, to work in any heart that may be uncertain about salvation. Lord, draw them to yourself, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll stand for just a moment, have the uh, piano play uh, here at this invitation time. But there may be someone here and you need to be, be definite. You know, my prayer life has slipped some. And uh, I have not had that dynamic interaction. I want to be obeying the Lord and hearing his voice day after day after day. Tell you what, you just have to make that decision. I have to make that decision all the time to just go forward uh, in this because it's the most glorious part of our life. And if God's working in your heart, I encourage you to let him work. And friend, if you need the Savior or any other needs, you come let the pastors know as the piano plays. <clears throat>
you may look this way. Well, again, thank you for all the labor to this point, and let's band together to believe God. Precious souls will be here. By the way, you can keep asking folks uh, right on through the week. And uh, remember, you can ask them Friday night, too, if they can't come during the week. So we've got plenty of opportunities, and Wednesday night. That'll be a tremendous blessing. Don't forget about teens, junior and senior high, for uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Remember, junior high are part of the program on uh, Monday through Friday in the morning. So number of just opportunities for us. Uh, the opportunity to serve the Lord here is uh, great over these next few days. Ask God, let's ask God for protection and power and do something very unusual at this time. All right, Pastor Van, if you'll come, close us in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the practical training and truth we got tonight, just about how we can have victory daily in allowing you to work in our lives. I do pray that there would be, even this week, of a lot of labor for you, a lot of also time with you. And uh, may we take more time to uh, be with you and to have your strength and your power. And may we daily take steps of obedience uh, that you're calling us to and to share what you're doing in our lives. May our lives each day be a living testimony of the transfer transforming work that you're doing just through our time with you. So help us to be determined to make that a priority. And Lord, we know that as we look to you, you will work in our lives and speak to us. Thank you for this, our church family. Thank you for their faithfulness and for their passion to be a part of your ministry uh, and really what you're calling us to this week. I pray that you'd use us, strengthen us, and uh, Lord, even work in hearts tonight as we contact folks and remind them. I pray that you would bless tomorrow as we begin in a very special way. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.